Hi, this is Andy from Orbit Media, and I'm happy to share some of our latest experiments in AI. And this time specifically, I want to show how to use AI to audit and then potentially improve a web page. Not a blog post or an article, but a service page, a sales page, a money page. Uh, the idea behind these pages is to do two things, generally speaking, attract visitors, SEO, and convert visitors into leads, CRO, or conversion rate optimization. So let's try to use AI to improve a page, examine a page, audit it from both perspectives, and then see if we can make improvements accordingly. Okay, I'm making up a business here. It's called Space Launch Incorporated. We provide space launch services, and we're a spaceport, and uh, we target commercial satellite operators because we launch satellites into space. Uh, I've actually got a real web page here. Uh, I'm just to run the experiment. Uh, it happens to be a home page. It's about 325 words. It's got a header. It's got only one subhead. It's basically just three long paragraphs. Any of us could look at this page and say, that could be a better page. Uh, any of us could say, that doesn't align well with home page best practices or with you know, digital content or SEO best practices. Uh, but it's going to work for this experiment. Uh, and step one will be for us to make a persona or give it a persona. We're going to give it the best input we can to get the best output and that starts with empathy. Digital is all about empathy. So uh, in this case, we need to know about our, sat our commercial satellite operator. Uh, if I have a persona, I'm going to load it in. If I have defined ICPs, ideal client profiles, I'm going to load them in. Uh, whatever you've got questions from sales meetings or insights or an outline of who you'd sell to, put that in. If not, we're going to use a, a AI to do that part for us too. Uh, this is a very simple prompt. We've done other, other videos and articles about how to build better personas in AI. Uh, this one I'm going to keep it basic and just say, build me a persona of a job title. Commercial satellite operator who works for a company type. Global telecom company. And then I could add a bunch of other stuff related to the company size or their geography or their mission. I'm going to keep this simple. List the roles, the goals, the challenges, the pain points, and this person's decision criteria for choosing a spaceship launch services company. And here it goes, right? There is the persona. It kind of gives me their roles, their goals, their challenges, their pain points, and it's not bad. Uh, I did some research and saw that there were some things missing from this. I would expect this to talk about risk. It didn't talk about risk. I do not expect accuracy from AI. I'm gonna be validating and checking every checking this every step along the way, especially these early steps, because if it gets it wrong, everything else will be garbage. So uh, geopolitical considerations, ride share opportunities is a thing for satellite launching, and insurance and risk management. Yes, I believe these are important criteria. So I'm simply gonna tell it to add those to my persona, okay? Good enough. Certainly, here's the additions for the persona. We've got a persona. Now, I'm going to copy and paste in my web page and say, review the following web content. How does it align or not align with just with this person's information needs? And I copy and paste in the page. And then it sort of gives me a pretty decent version of these are the ways in which it aligned. And these are the ways in which it maybe did not align. Gap analysis. Uh, useful, right? It's uh, AI is great at showing you what's not there. Very different from SEO and from search. Search shows you what's available and retrieves information. Uh, AI can actually tell you what isn't on the page or what's missing. Uh, so here, obviously, like these are things that I could potentially improve and make this a better page right away, right? There's some gaps here. But uh, let's go a step farther with that. I want to compare it to another page. I've got a competitor. We're, we're fighting head to head in the trenches every day or in the clouds every day. Uh, so I'm going to copy and paste in another web page. And here's my prompt. Here's a copy of another web page, which, which page is more likely to be helpful and informative to my persona. Create a matrix comparing the two and show your thinking. Copy and paste in the page. Boom. Quite useful. Quite interesting. Let's compare the two pages. Here's how they align and don't align. A column for our website, a column for the competitor. The AI chose little kind of special characters here, the checks and X's. And it shows me basically like the ways in which we satisfied information needs, which is a big factor in conversion, and how the competitor satisfied information needs. Right? Which of these pages is more useful? Which of these pages is more likely to convert, Jessica? What am I missing? What are my gaps? What are everybody's gaps? It's all right here on the page. Now, if you use Code Interpreter and you started with Code Interpreter from the very top, uh, it'll draw charts for you. Code Interpreter is a feature available uh, for ChatGPT Plus users. Uh, you have to turn it on and then use that in the chat. And then you can do things like this. Make me a bar chart that shows me the extent to which I addressed this persona's information needs. 
and the extent to which my, my competitor did, um, and maybe the extent to which neither of us did. So you can see no one here talk, is talking about risk management. Uh, that's a big gap. Uh, compliance is completely missing. Uh, some of them we do better than they do. Some of them they do better than us. Very useful. Great. Okay. We've got some ideas for conversion. We could stop now and go make it a better page. We could go make it more informative, more persuasive, more complete, addressing objections, answering questions. That's the job of a web page. But we've got that other job too. It's not just about the mousetrap. It's about the cheese. So let's try to optimize it for search. Now, the question becomes, what are the key phrases missing? What are the semantically related phrases? How could I make this more comprehensive and therefore, uh, higher quality in the eyes of search, right? A more detailed page with more depth. Now, to find the semantically related phrases, you can just go straight to Google and start typing key phrases, relevant key phrases, and seeing the words and phrases that it suggests and put those on a list. If I'm targeting the phrase space launch services, space flight, rocket launch, CubeSat, these seem to be phrases that are related to my target key phrase. They must be, they're right there on the suggested phrases. The people also ask box is an important source of relevant questions. Answering these questions would help make my page higher quality, more comprehensive, more likely to rank, right? This is semantic SEO. We're gonna target the topic, not just the specific key phrase. And actually, if you search and start scrolling through and looking down, like you'll find words and phrases used just in, that appear just in the search results page that maybe would be uh, closely related to my target key phrase, uh, space crash launch services. And so like, you know, launch vehicles is apparently a thing. Low Earth orbit is apparently a thing. Satellites, of course. So these are things that I got to make sure that I include on the page. I've got a list. I did it on paper. <laughs> Whatever you did it, you captured them. Or you can use a tool. Here's Market Muse. There's several of these. It's a semantic SEO tool. It's an on-page SEO rec uh, edit recommendation tool. And it basically, at a glance, I just put in my target key phrase, space launch services, for which I rank like number 25 or 28 right now put in my page, it scrapes the page, analyzes my copy, compares it to the other pages that rank for that key phrase, uh, analyzes their copy, and shows me the differences between my keyword frequency and theirs. Basically, there's a list, that's my point. There's a list of, of relevant phrases. Now, I'm gonna take these phrases and load them into AI and ask it to categorize. Here's the prompt. Categorize the following key phrases into high-level topics. Because if you just dump in a bunch of phrases and tell it to use these phrases on the page, it's, gonna, it's weird, right? But I wanna first, group them and then see how well those groups of key phrases align with my audience's information needs because I want to do SEO and conversion optimization at the same time. Okay. So I load them in. It actually does a lovely job. Great. Here are all the related key phrases and their categories. It talks, you know, we should talk about geographies. We should talk about different entities, um, types of missions. So now I have my audience's information needs. I have the uh, the gaps in my content, how well I addressed those, and I have the key phrases that are also grouped into categories. Here's my next prompt. It's kind of detailed, but bear with me. Build a table with three columns. In the first column, list the persona's information needs, prioritize them. In the second column, make the header say conversion clarity, and on a scale of zero to five, uh, score this web page's ability to both inform and persuade based on the audience's information needs, right? Analyze my content and compare it to this audience's information needs. In the third column, make the heading key phrase relevance zero to five, and on a scale of zero to five, indicate how well the page incorporates the key phrases in those key phrase categories. Give higher scores to the page uh, if the page includes most or all the key phrases from the given category. This is a little bit magical. It actually now makes a table for me that shows at a glance, in one view, in one scroll depth right here, the page's ability to satisfy both the audience's information needs and the audience and the, the page's ability to indicate relevance for rankings in search. Scored zero to five. Is it good for conversion on that? Is it good for uh, is it good for uh, SEO on that? So it made this own scoring system. It's it's scoring everything against the information needs and the priorities of my buyer, my prospect. And so really, we could stop now. This is obvious, right? Like what we need to do. Like this is I could you know, stop this video and go make a better page that both does a better job of indicating relevance and ranking and selling to the visitor by answering their questions, right? And being highly informative. What it says at the bottom, provides clear alignment between the persona's information needs and how specifically those topics are addressed. So, so if you wanted to know, so there's, that's helpful. If you wanted to know the criteria that it used, its own scoring system, just ask. And here it is, it, the, my zero to five school, the score that it devised uh, for conversion clarity and my zero to five score that it devised for the keyword relevance. Okay, 
Now I'm going to proceed past the analysis and let it take a shot at an outline. Not write the page. I, want to, I don't want it to write anything yet because I'm worried about accuracy. I'm going to have it just make an outline. Here's the prompt. You're an expert at both conversion copywriting and SEO. Write an outline for a major revision to this page. This outline will become the structure for a page that gets scores of five across the board. We already have the criteria. It made up the scoring system. I just want to give me an A+. Plus. So certainly, right, it jumps in and it creates a basic outline. Uh, I don't know this audience. This is an experiment. I'm not, this is not my client or my company, so uh, I'm not going to judge this. But let's say that this is sufficient to, from here, go enhance that, improve it, uh, get, uh, uh, pitch it, get approval on it, edit it, keep iterating on this, right? Because we're going to get ready to actually produce something that's of high quality. There's a role for humans in the world. And if, if this is a good head start, great. For a lot of people, that's what AI is all about. Never starting from scratch. And here's an idea to kind of another, another data point to validate that. Let the AI itself score it against some other existing content. How well does this page align with the recommendations in the Orbit Media blog? User scale of one to five, five being well aligned. Oh, it can't go read the Orbit Media blog because it doesn't have, it can't browse the web. <laughs> so I'm going to get around that. You have already read the Orbit blog. How well does the page align with recommendations? Now it gives me the recommendations. Isn't that strange? If you tell it to go do something, it can tell you, it will tell you if it can't do that. But if you tell it it already did something, it will respond. Okay, it gives it fives out of most categories of four. The overall alignment is 4.8 out of five. Great, that gives me a little bit more confidence. What I do next is uh, depends upon my, my passion for my job, my, my agreement with my client, uh, my beliefs about, um, you know, accuracy and uh, humanity <laughs> and the relationship that professionals have with AI. But from here, if you chose to, you could then go have it write the page and the prompt is very short and simple. Using the outline above, write a revision to that web page that gets fived across the board. Great. If you want to go even farther with that and really push it, you could try a prompt like this. Expand on that copy, right? It, you didn't like the draft. Add detail, add short paragraphs, use persuasive copywriting techniques. The goal of the page is to both rank and convert visitors. You might get a better response, right? And then here's one. If you want to get uh, really try to train it more, try this. You are Andy Crestadina. You wrote the book, Content Chemistry. You've taken Joanna Weeb's con uh, copywriting course. You've read Conver uh, Copywriting Secrets by Jim Edwards. Now go rewrite that draft using the key phrases and SEO best practices and use persuasion and conversion copywriting techniques. Uh, this will likely get you uh, something more useful if you're uh, through better prompting and training and, and uh, uh, teaching it, not just about the audience, but about the style that you wanted to write. And you could also give it a bunch of samples of your writing and then ask it to write something in your style. Uh, if this worked, uh, you could compare the draft before and after in the same chat. We used Code Interpreter, remember, so we can have it visualize charts. Uh, I've got the original page and my revised page in a spider chart with every radial axis being a different information needed to the audience. That's kind of fun. Uh, you could also copy and paste the new one into Market Muse if you were using that and see the content score before and after to evaluate it against SEO. And if it all worked in the end, it would look like this. This is GA4 showing me pre-post website page change uh, lift uh, based on the date range, right? And uh, I can see the traffic lift before and after. I can see the engagement lift before and after. And ultimately, the bottom line metric would be the conversion rate, which is uh, in GA4, you'd calculate that to see uh, the, over the website's overall conversion rate for visitors who pass through that page. Um, it's not a specific page. It's the overall conversion rate for someone who saw several pages. So... Hope that's helpful. Kind of fun, right? Uh, AI can be used to score things and to evaluate things against multiple criteria and then uh, use that same scoring system to recommend changes. Again, Andy from Orbit Media. I hope this was helpful. Feel free to pass it along to anyone else and uh, subscribe to get more of these at the Orbit Media blog. Thanks again. Bye-bye.